Hello everybody, it's Torrently from Whipper Gaming and welcome to episode 3 of your Let's Program Basic Bucket Plugins. That's quite a tongue twister to try saying that over and over again. Uh, in the last few episodes, we learned how to use Eclipse and we started coding the bulk of our plugin. Now, last episode, I didn't really explain what Hashmap did, and I'm sorry about that, but I remember what it was. Now, what a Hashmap does is it is a way of storing when a player is using the command. So, for example, if I type for slash basic, I would be stored in the hash map. So it knows when I'm using the command. And when I deactivate basic by typing basic again, it takes me out of that hash map. So it's just a way of storing players who are using the command. It's quite useful to have. And the reason why this has got an error is because I put has map where it should be hash map. Simple as that. Now. Now the intro is all air. Now the intro is out of the way. I'm going to be starting coding in the next bit. Now I'm not going to carry on uh, underneath the defining areas. I'm going to be starting the other method, which is the on disable and on enable. Now, the on enable and on disable, what they do is they they get called up whenever the plugin is obviously disabled or enabled. So to write these in Java, we put at override, and then we put public void because it's another method on disable put your brackets and then parenthesis which is showing you're doing a method and I'm not going to put anything in that yet because I don't need to because I'm not going through the over disable yeah, the on disable bit yet what I'm going to be showing you through is the on enable which is the interesting bit so again do override and we'll do public void on enable, put your brackets, put your parentheses, and you're going to be getting some errors down here because you need to enter another one because you're en you know you're editing text outside of the uh, out of the body. But we'll get around to that soon. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be registering the events. Now the events are called up whenever a player does anything in Minecraft. So when he places a block, when he destroys a block, they're all called events. Even when he moves, that's even an event. So, to register them, we're going to put plugin manager, we'll put pm, because that's plugin manager for sure, equals get server. So, we're getting the server. So, we're telling Eclipse that to register the event, we want to get the server. Put your brackets, put the dot, we'll get the plugin manager, and I'm freezing, so it always does that and it makes me spell incorrectly. Plugin manager. I'll put our brackets and the semicolon. So what we've done there is we've defined the plugin manager and we are gonna get the server, we're gonna get the plugin manager, okay? And I need to make that a capital M, otherwise it's not gonna get red. Right. So what we'll do next is we'll do PM, because that's the plugin manager, and do register, and then do event, open bracket. I don't know why it did that, but okay. And then do event and dot and type and dot. And then it will list all of the events that Minecraft has in it. So, like block dispense, block damage, block can build, all of that good stuff. And the one we're looking for is when a U player uses a command. Now, I said previously that Bucket changes its uh, hooks for its commands, its events, it changes a lot of that. And recently, I think the player command has been changed to player command preprocess. So we'll put that in, and then we'll do the comma. And then we put this dot player listener because the uh, command pre uh, preprocess is being filtered through the player listener because blocks can't give commands. And we're going to be creating a player listener soonish, just going over um, how the commands work, etc. Alright, so now what we need to do is we need to tell Eclipse, Bucket, Java how high of a priority the listening for the player command is. So how we do this is we put a comma after this dot player listener, and then we do events, because we're going through the event again, then you do priority, which is under bucket again, and then you do either high, highest, low, lowest, or normal. Now the way you organize these priority events depends on how much stress you're going to be putting on the server because obviously if you're going to put all of your uh, events on the priority of highest that means every time the code gets run 
it's going to try and put them all on the highest priority, which means more stress on the server on your end. So we don't need the command to be on the highest priority because it only listens for when the player types it. So we're just going to do normal, just type normal, do another comma, then this. So it's saying whenever the uh, event is called upon, it will go through the priority, it will be normal, and then it's going to be this. Okay? And we need to now create another register event, just like the one before. So it's going to be pm.register event, just like last time, I'll just type it out. Events. Why does it keep doing that? I mean, seriously, how fake. Reference to Sam here there being very fake. Dot type. Dot. Now, if we're going to be creating a tutorial whenever a torch is placed on the wall, we're going to have to select the block underscore place, obviously. So just go to the block underscore place, which it should pop up. If it doesn't, just type event dot block underscore place. It will register it by itself. And then we do comma as last time. This dot block listener because we are putting this in the block listener because we're it's going to filter through whenever the torch is placed and because the torch is counted as a block it needs to be in the block listener let me just type that right there we go um then we're going to do this again we're going to do events dot priority which is under bucket again and this doesn't have to be the highest because they only it's only going to run through it once they're in the hash map once they've typed the command in so we're just going to put it normal again, we don't want anything too straining on the server, I can't type. For some reason I can never type when I'm doing any recording for you guys, so I'm putting myself through this torture just for you. And again, we're having errors here because there is no player listener at the moment, there is no block listener going on at the moment, so don't worry about that, it's all okay. Alright, so now you've written these down, what we're going to put in is we're going to get the information from the YML file we created earlier. So we get information from the YML by doing a specific code like this. So underneath the PM register events, do plugin description ah, file can't type today. PDF file equals this dot get description. Okay. Let me just scroll along. And we want to put the semicolon at the end, not over there. There. Okay, it's all good. And again, you want to import the plugin description file from Bucket. If anything does uh, spring up an error, always hover over it and see if you can import the proper requirements. Because nine times out of ten, you'll find that things related back to Minecraft or related back to Bucket will be impossible. So stuff like blocks, stuff like tools, materials, player events, they can all be imported from Bucket into your Eclipse. And I think the reason why my imports are messed up is because, yeah, they've, they've been compacted for easier use. Um, I'll keep them there just so you can see them. There you go, I have imported the block, the player, the event, the plugin description file, the plugin manager, and the Java plugin from the official Java thing. Actually, that's from Bucket, but you know, there's from the official Java. But Back on course, what this is doing here is the plugin description file, which is the plugin YML, is it's getting the description from it. So what it's basically doing is once it's been enabled, it's going to get the description. And you know you've seen these other plugins like WellGuard, which when they load up in the console, or LevelCraft when it loads up in the console, it says found LevelCraft core. Now how it does this is it prints out to the log, or it does a system print line. And whenever you watch any tutorials, as the first thing people will teach you is how to print out to, well, how to get a system to print line, because that is the easiest, easiest thing you could ever do in any programming language. Is actually the first tutorial on many, many, many. So if you already know Java, there's no point in teaching you. But I'm just going to type it out and explain what it does. So we're calling on the system here. And we want it out, and we want it to print line. This is printing line in the log. Let's call uh, get rid of that bracket. Do an open bracket. Let's do PDF file dot get name. So it's getting the name. And he's putting caps. Brackets plus. Let me just scroll along again, and then let's do 
uh, speech marks because this is getting the version which from your um, YML file this is why I told you to put the version down because this gets the version from the YML file so if you put 0 0.1 it will spring up 0 0.1 in the console so again let's put another plus and then we'll do PDF file dot get version brackets plus speech marks is enabled and let's do that and then we'll close our spare brackets and put another semicolon down and that seems all good now what it's basically doing here is it's getting the system it's making it print it out it's getting the PDF file of the name and then it adds the version onto it and then it gets the version so that would be version then it'll get it'll print out version it'll get the version which will be 0 0.1 and then it'll say is enabled and I'll show you how that works in the console once we get round to it because at the moment this is not ready to be exported it is not even considered to be a plugin yet okay so I think yep that, that is it for the on enable so I'm probably going to be calling it there on that plugin on that plugin on this uh, tutorial so join us for episode 4 when we'll be going through the player listener which is what people want to know which is how they uh, how they define things through Bucket. So, thank you guys for watching. I know it's been a bit sketchy, but I am just going through my memory trying to trying to explain it. It's not that easy teaching people a programming language, but I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, join me for episode four, which I will be recording straight after this episode. I'm doing it in massive chunks. So, I'll see you guys later. All right, bye.